gyms for his kingdom. All the pure ones, all the bright ones, he's loved and his own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. Little children, little children, who love their Redeemer, all the jewels, precious jewels, his loved and his own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems. Mm -hmm. Good morning, happy Sabbath. Welcome to Stand Up For God. We are glad you're here to worship with us on this beautiful summer day. Um, we just want to welcome everyone. We have um, a few announcements this morning. First of all, we have a potluck next Sabbath. July 13th is our potluck next Sabbath. If you have any announcements, just come on up and we'll, we'll get you in here. But yeah, next Sabbath is our potluck, so make sure we bring tons of food so we have enough for everyone. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Um, even though it's not in the bulletin, I just wanted to make a quick announcement about our upcoming fall campout. It is the first weekend of October, so it's going to be um, October 4 to 6. Um, for those of you that want to do tent camping, we are going to go to Chilhawi Campground. Um, hopefully it'll be a little cooler than last year. Um, and so if you guys want to come um, camp for two nights, or even if you just want to come for the day for Sabbath, we're going to have a Sabbath school program, a joint one, and then also church service. And, um, and if you are interested in having electrical hookups, our group site does not have those. You can um, go to Chihaui's website and reserve um, a site if you're interested in bringing a camper. Also, some exciting news. Um, Jen and Reggie Watson are adopting a baby. Um, we are so excited for them. I hope, I'm sure it's public knowledge, but because <laughs> it is now. Um, I'm sure Jen's in the back listening, but I'm really excited for them, and we are planning on throwing them a shower. Um, it will probably be the first weekend of November, just to make sure everything works out okay. Um, so it'll all be in the bulletin next week, um, but I just wanted to um, get you thinking about it ahead of time. Uh, it's going to be a baby boy, so... Um, we're so excited for them, and we want to help them celebrate a new addition to their family. So, um, Pastor Ian's shower's pending, but I'll keep you updated on that. <laughs> You're planning ahead, aren't you, Katie? <laughs> Happy Sabbath to you all. We have a couple slides we're going to have our AV team put up. One is announcing our welcome reception that's going to be in honor of Katie's baptism, Katie Grant's baptism, which is, a, she's excited about it, and so are we. And also, we're welcoming our first Sabbath. Actually, Pastor Jason started Monday on the 1st, but this is his first Sabbath, and he'll be speaking, as you see in the bulletin. And we're going to be doing a special installation service a little later in our, in our church service. But Pastor Jason and his wife Natalia and Josephine and Ishmael, we're going to be welcoming them as well in that reception. So Katie will be up front here. You'll get a chance to greet her. And then we're going to go down to the basement to the old early teen uh, Sabbath school room. And that is where we will be doing the welcome reception. And then there will be places you can sit down there. The next slide is another thing. We, we're having a lot, of, a lot of hellos and welcomes. But if you'll go to the one for the farewell, there it is. But we're also saying a goodbye. And Katie's planning ahead, I see, f after this fact. But we'll do farewell first. And that is for Pastor Ian. Ian is going to be leaving us, and obviously we're all going to be very sad for that. And so what we're doing on the Sabbath of the 27th 
Um, there will be a bonfire vespers and supper and being coordinated by the social committee. And then also after that, the Pathfinders are coordinating a gym night to follow. So around nine o'clock after Sabbath. And so it's going to be a very special, special Sabbath. It'll be a sad Sabbath, but also it'll be a special Sabbath as well. And we're glad that, um, and that Sabbath, uh, Pastor Ian is going to share uh, God's word. He's going to have our sermon that Sabbath. And um, he, today, though, is a good time because he gets a chance to baptize Katie. Are you going to come up and talk about VBS? Okay. So, um, plus, he has got, he's pretty busy between now and then. So um, he's got a lot going on. He's going to come up and talk about VBS at this time. We are only two days away, everyone. I'm counting down the hours, trying to collect everything that we can for our Vacation Bible School program. It is happening starting Monday at 6.30. Uh, we already have about, I think, 20-some-odd kids who have registered, and uh, we'll probably be expecting more than that. Uh, we've been advertising to the community. If you've been driving around Udwa Ringo Road, East Brainerd, I put up yard signs last week to uh, let people know uh, where our Vacation Bible School is, and only one of them has been taken down. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, so our Vacation Bible School will be happening this week. Please keep it in your prayers. We are excited for it. If you want to help out with setup tomorrow, we'll be meeting here in the church sanctuary at 10 a.m. We'll probably be done by 2. Uh, we'll see if we can get done by 2. Um, but if you want to come out and help, we'd love to have you help. We'd love to have you come out and be a part of our VBS too if you still want to help out. If you show up and you say, hey, Pastor Ian, I really want to help, we'll find a place for you because I like having as many people as involved as possible. So um, just want to let you guys know about the Vacation Bible School, and we are excited. So I hope to see you out there. Okay, everyone, you all know today is the first Sabbath of the month, so we will be going out to feed the homeless. We will meet at 2 o'clock right here at the church. Um, everything is ready for us, and you know they will be expecting us today. All right, so real quick business. Number two in your bulletin, we have a second reading out of Stand Up For Gap for Henry and Rebecca Hernandez. For Michael and Julie Dant, um, Juanita Johnson, and Edwin and Betty Abraham. Um, do we have a motion we accept these transfers? And do we have a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Thank you very much. Just got two things. Before, uh, before we get into our service today, there are two things that we're going to do if you look in your bulletin. Um, before we have our opening song, we're going to have our baptismal candidate introduction, and then we're going to have our new pastor installation, which uh, uh, Tim LaFue is here to do that with us for, from the conference. Uh, but I want to invite Katie Grant. Katie, if you could come up here right now, okay? Being up front can be a little nerve-wracking, so it's okay, Katie, don't worry. You'll be right up here. Just stand right next to me, okay? You don't have to be nervous. Uh, a couple, well, just last school year in October, um, Pastor David held a student week, of, well, a week of prayer. And at the end of that week of prayer, we did um, a call to see who would like to study to be baptized. And throughout the, throughout the school year, I've been studying with many different people, and Katie is one of them. Katie and I finished our lessons just, uh, just this past month. And uh, we're excited that today she is making that decision for baptism. And I'm um, really happy and excited for that. Uh, her family is here uh, with us today. Her uh, grandparents are here, of course, longtime members of our church. Um, we also have uh, her mother and her father and her siblings as well and her cousins, which I can see them up there. I can see you guys. I can wave at you right here. And they're waving back at me. So I'm glad to see them up there, too. So... Um, Katie, before, before we get ready for your baptism, introducing you as our baptismal candidate, uh, we have some vows, and of course, I've already gone over these with you, and you know exactly what you need to say, right? 
okay? So these are just six vows that we want to share with you today. Number one, I accept the death of Jesus on the cross to save me from sin. I believe he rose again and is now in heaven preparing a special home for me. I accept the change of heart God gives me when I receive him. Because of this, the Holy Spirit can help me live as his faithful child. Do you believe that? Yes. Okay. Number two, I believe God gave me the Bible, his word, to help me grow more like Jesus and guide my decisions. I will spend time reading it. Okay. Number three, I accept and obey with God's help the Ten Commandments, which show me how to respect God first and then all of his creation, including his Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, which God set apart as holy, a holy time to remind me he is creator and redeemer who wants to spend special time with me. Do you agree with that? Okay. Yeah. I believe Jesus is coming soon, and I accept my responsibility to help people prepare for his second coming so he can take his people home to heaven. Do you accept that? Yeah. All right. Two more. I choose to be baptized as Jesus was, to show I love and serve him, and to share the good news Jesus died for me and is coming soon to take me to heaven. Okay, and last one. With God's power, I accept the teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist Church as found in God's Word, the Bible, and choose to make them part of my life. I choose to be a member of His special remnant church, doing my helpful part to take its God-given message to all the peoples of the world. And do you agree with that? All right. Amen. So at this time, Katie and I are going to go and uh, separate and prepare for the baptism, which will happen right after the morning prayer, okay? So uh, without further ado, I want to invite uh, Pastor Tim LeFew, Pastor David, if I think if you're coming up here, and of course, Pastor Jason, okay? Before we have our installation of Pastor Jason, I want to just remember, remind you, I forgot to mention this in the announcement period of time, maybe some of you I think have, I've heard that may not have received the email, that for Dallas Bunton, who passed away on Wednesday evening, the visitation is at the Chattanooga um, Funeral Home in Hickson, and that's 4 to 8 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, Sunday afternoon. And then the funeral service itself is going to be Monday on the 8th at the University Church at 2 p.m. So again, for Dallas Bunton services, visitation is tomorrow, Sunday from 4 to 8 p.m. at the Chattanooga Funeral Home in Hickson. And then on Monday, is at College Dale University Church at 2 p.m. will be the funeral service itself. Okay. This is a very special time. We've mentioned uh, welcomes and, and goodbyes. Today is a day of welcomes, as we just heard with Katie of her baptism. But then we have another welcome, another saying hello, and that's to Pastor Jason and his family, Jason Shaw, and his family, his wife Natalia, his daughter Josephine, and son Ishmael. And Pastor, well, we're going to call you Pastor because call porters are pastors too. So uh, Tim Defue, he is here to represent our conference, and he has come to share a greeting and have the special installation prayer for Pastor Jason as we welcome him on his first Sabbath as he starts here in our church. Is this one working? There we go. Thank you very much. It's good to be here today. It is an exciting church day at your church with the baptism and also with your new pastor coming to serve here. We want to ask Pastor Jason and his family to come on forward. And Natalia and Josephine and Ishmael. And in addition to that, we want to ask that the elders uh, come forward. And uh, if there's any other ordained ministers as well, come, please come forward. I'm uh, really glad to be here today. I'm almost a little amused at the title they give to this service, The Installation of the Pastor. It makes it sound like I've come from Home Depot or something uh, to, <laughs> to install him. Uh, but it's really a celebration is what we've come here today to celebrate the beginning of his ministry here, and uh, 
to have the, the privilege of offering a dedication prayer. It's a nice looking family, isn't it? You know, I know that uh, Pastor Jason, uh, this is his first day here, but it's not the beginning of his ministry. The Lord laid upon his heart uh, quite a while back to come into the ministry and the desire to serve him, and this is really the beginning of his formal service here uh, that we're celebrating today, and we're excited about that. I, I read his, his resume, and he really has a broad background in service already in the ministry. Uh, leading Bible studies and group Bible studies, evangelistic me meetings, and very good experience, and uh, including his studies at Southern Adventist University. And so I know that the church here at Standard for Gap is going to welcome him with open arms and be supportive. Part of ministry is not the pastor ministering to the church, but the church ministering to the pastor and supporting the pastor. And so we know that you're going to be very open to that. Now I have another insight into Pastor Jason, and that my son worked in landscaping right along with Pastor Jason at Southern Adventist University. And I asked my son, who is a person of few words and little praise, I said, how is Pastor Jason? And he said, good guy, works hard. So that's what you've got right here, a good guy that's going to work hard for your church. And really, that's, that's uh, the secret to success along with the Lord's blessing. And today we want to have a special dedication prayer uh, for Pastor Jason and his family as they begin the ministry here at this church. So we'll ask us all to kneel here on the platform, and we'll ask the Lord's blessing upon his ministry. Our gracious Father in heaven, today we've come here this morning for a special occasion to welcome Pastor Jason Shaw and his family into the ministry of the Standard for Gap, Seventh-day Adventist Church. We know that you have laid upon his heart that desired for ministry. One day in his life, he felt that peculiar call to, to be in full-time service for you. And he's followed that path. He's followed it through his studies at, at Southern Adventist University. He's followed it through his life and practical ministry that he's already applied. And today, we're celebrating that as he's come here to the Standard for Gap Church to begin his ministry here. But we know that the ministry is only effective through the power of your spirit. And so today we invite a very special double portion of your spirit come upon Pastor Jason. Not just upon him, but upon his family, upon his wife, and upon his children as they serve here together in this church. We pray that you will bless him, bless him in all that he does, that when people see him, that he will reflect Jesus to them, and they'll know that he's a man of God and that he desires to serve you, and that they'll feel that desire to follow you as well. And so pray that you will honor him in a very special way. Pray a special blessing as well upon the Standard for Gap Church, that as they receive the pastor here, that they'll receive him with a willingness to serve as well and a willingness to become a part of the ministry alongside him that this church can be a light to the community, that it will draw people to you, and that we can see people as a result in the kingdom of heaven, and we can live alongside each other there. We thank you for Jesus today and for what he has done for us, and we pray your blood to cover us today. Pray that your blood will cover Pastor Jason and his family in a special way as he stands before us this morning in the pulpit. Give him the words to say. We thank you, Lord, today for your love. And we ask this dedication prayer in the sweet name of Jesus. Amen.
Just a reminder again, as you, in the, if you weren't here in the announcement period time, we were going to do a special welcome reception for Pastor Jason and his family, as well as for Katie in honor of her baptism. So please keep that in mind. That will be downstairs in the, where the Focus Sabbath School is at, where it was the old early teen Sabbath school room. So please go down there after church and continue as we uh, celebrate this very special two welcomes today with Katie joining our church and the Shaws as well. Now it's a little different. If you're familiar with the Aeolians, um, the founder of the Aeolians rewrote it. So if you would please stand and sing along. Very quickly, I'd like to say happy Sabbath to those who may be listening to live streaming. And God bless you. And you may not be here physically, but surely you're here spiritually. As far as possible, let us kneel for prayer. Majesty, your majesty, Lord, we give you all the praise because you are worthy. Thank you for your precious son. He didn't have to lay down his life for us. He doesn't have to plead for us. Thank you for a love that cannot be measured. Please forgive us for all our wrongdoing. Take us in your hands and shape and mold us according to your will. And use us, Father, in the way you see fit. We pray, Father, for those who are struggling with illnesses. Lord, please touch them. Please make them better. Please restore them, Father. For we know that all things are possible for you. 
and you can turn any situation around. Father, we're thankful that you watched over our Cuban missionaries a couple of weeks ago. You kept them safe there, and you brought them back home safely. And we thank you for this, Father. Lord, we're happy about Kay today. Lord, it's such a wonderful thing, Lord, and we just pray that you will be with her, Lord, and that she will continue to grow closer to you, Lord, and that her life will be a witness, Lord, to your love. Father, we pray for anyone that doesn't know you. Some of us may have family members who are not walking with you or friends, and we want to pray for those we don't even know, Lord, that they will turn to you before it's too late and put you first in their lives. Please protect our service members wherever they're serving. Please keep them safe, Father. Father, please be with Pastor Shaw as he brings us the message today. Give him the wisdom of heaven so that we may benefit, Lord, from wisdom put from you. Father, we also ask that you would bless the Vacation Bible School. We just pray, Father, that young hearts that maybe don't know you will come to know you, Lord, through this school. Thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us. Thank you for loving us, Father. And we just pray, Father, that you would keep us with you throughout all eternity. And we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. don't know how to get into a baptistry. <laughs> Is it warm? Yeah, it's really nice and warm. Well, today is a very special day. We're thankful that we have the opportunity to witness Katie giving her life to Jesus. Now, she's already made this decision in her heart. This is just the public expression of that today, saying that she really wants to commit her life and she wants to reveal that to everybody here as well. Before we have our baptism, though, uh, her mom, Mary Kay, would like to say something special to her daughter, Katie. The most important accomplishment that a Christian mother desires for her child is that her child has a relationship with Jesus. This is what I desire for my children more than anything else knowing that they have a relationship with Jesus and a faith that does not waver is a way to know that no matter what happens in life, my kids will know that they are not alone and be okay. Katie, you are my sweet and spicy little girl. I am so happy and proud that you are choosing to have a relationship with Jesus and to let God use you for a greater purpose in life. I pray that although this world has become or will become confusing and stressful at times, that you stand strong in your faith and continue to grow in his light. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, remember? Right there. There you go. Okay. Well, Katie, we've been on this road for a while now. We've enjoyed some studies together, and uh, it's been my privilege to study with you and teach you more about Jesus. But remember, this isn't the end of the journey. There's much more to come, much more that God is going to do in your life. So at this time, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All right. At this time, I want to have a special prayer for Katie, so if we could all please bow our heads as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you did so long ago, for setting the example for us in giving our lives publicly to you. Lord, I want to thank you for Katie and the journey that she's been on. You've given her this life, and now she's giving it back to you. And Lord, as she has given her life to you today, I want to pray that 
a special dose of your Holy Spirit continue to be with her throughout her life. Let her parents mold her and shape her and help her in her walk with you as much as they've already have. But also, Lord, here's a church family. Lord, we are responsible for helping Katie grow too. And Lord, I want to pray that as we help Katie in her spiritual journey is that we do our very best, leave the rest in your hands, and know that you will take care of her. Lord, thank you so much for blessing Katie with life. Thank you so much for blessing our church with Katie. And we are so thankful that not only is she a part of our church family, but she is a part of your eternal family too. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise your name for this day, and especially for this special moment. In your precious name I pray. Amen. All right. Our scripture reading for today is found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. And the word of the Lord says, Seeing ye are purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Let us always remember that God blesses not just the hearing of our word, but the doing of his word. With the week that we've had this week, uh, celebrating of a July 4, I hope that everyone feels blessed. Um, it is blessed to live in this country. Um, the Lord has given us so much, and uh, it was another exciting week. And I'm glad to be here, obviously celebrating with you in this Sabbath day. And we've been blessed already with a baptism and an installation, and um, what better place to be this morning. Our offering today is for the combined budget, and at times that can sound rather drab, you know, it does go to pay for lights and electricity and building insurance and things, but to continue to broaden that perspective out, there's a lot of in-reach and outreach that goes on in this church. In-reach things like, you know, Pathfinders, Adventurers, Men's, Women's Ministry, our showers, whether it be weddings, babies that are being born that we celebrate, which is fantastic. And then we have outreach from our health ministries and, and uh, personal ministries. We've got our um, young people out doing a little bit of call porter work, uh, doing a great job. They're gonna probably beat um, from our, their targets of last year, this year, having a great summer. And of course, uh, for me, last but not least, we have our outreach with uh, MANA and Project Rescue that is just touch pointing lives at levels that just amazing for a church of this size to see. And so I hope we feel blessed and I hope you feel that even those of you at times who may be only giving five or 10 bucks to combined budget, you feel that you are part of something and I'm thankful for those who give larger amounts as well and that uh, we are making a difference. This is a church that is on a hill that is a light uh, in this community. So today our loose uh, offering is for combined budget. Uh, would the deacons please stand? Dear Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with so much. And out of that abundance, we return a tithe and offering to you. And I want to ask that you would bless it, you would multiply it, it would go out from this place and make a difference in the world that you would have it make. And thank you for all these people in your son's precious name. Amen.
Sorry, I missed one of our most important ministries, the church school, <laughs> as I said, yeah. uh, for which a product of that baptism today. Um, our children's story for our young people. Um, great time of the morning uh, for those uh, young people. There will be baskets in the back uh, collecting an offering to help those who uh, can't afford to attend our school. And if uh, I still know, know who's doing it, uh, I believe Vicki Davis is leading out this morning. So children, come on forward. Good morning. Do you know where the second best place to be on Sabbath morning is if you're not at church? Where's that? At the beach. Oh, Michael's at the beach today. I miss him. I love to go to the beach, and I love to go to the swimming pool and to the lake. You have a pool? Wow. Do you have one of these? You don't have a dory one like that? It's green. Well, I like dory and I like Nemo. What is this good for? For swimming? What does it do when you go swimming? It helps you float. What about this? Did anybody ever have one of these when they were one year old? Uh huh. I think Aiden had one. Yes. You did? You know what this is for? It's kind of like a life jacket, not the old timey one. This is really, really good to keep you safe when you're swimming. When you're little and don't know how to swim yet. You still, uh, well, that's all right, because now I don't swim anymore. I wear floaties, too, and I'm a lot older than you are. But my little granddaughter, Ava, she doesn't swim, so when she goes by the pool, we put her in a puddle jumper because it helps keep her safe. Now, my other grandsons, you know Michael and you know Camden, they think puddle jumpers are for babies, and they like swim rings because they can toss them off and get in the shallow end very quickly. You do? You have a, I have a pool, too, but right now it's in my den. It's a blow-up pool, and it's really small. You have two pools? Well, when, we, when we go to the beach, okay, shh, shh. When we go to the beach and we go to the swimming pool, our puddle jumpers and our swim rings kind of keep us safe. But does anybody know what this is? Sunscreen. Does mommy put sunscreen on you when you go out in the sun? 
a different kind, but it does the same thing. It keeps the sun from burning us if we put it on right. Yeah, we have to put it on a bunch of times. Um, these help me to see you when you're in the water because the sun is so bright and they protect my eyes so I can watch you. Have, have you figured out what I'm telling you? I've already got glasses, yes, but I have to wear sunglasses in the sun. So our, swim, our puddle jumper keeps us safer in the water as long as mommy or grandma or daddy's watching us in the water. And then we get a little older, our swim ring helps keep us a little bit safe in the water. And the sunscreen keeps the sun from burning us so bad. Do you know? Yeah, you put the ring. But do you know what else keeps us safe? Shh, shh, shh. In the morning, in the morning, before we go to the swimming pool, what does mommy do? Very first thing. She might put sunscreen, but you know what sunscreen could, could be like? Sunscreen could be like prayer because we put sunscreen all over and it keeps us safe from the sun. But when we pray and we ask Jesus to protect us and keep us safe, Okay. We always have our angels and we always have Jesus with us when we go swimming or when we go to the beach or we ride our bicycles. But if we don't follow the rules, sometimes things happen. I'm going to tell you a very quick story. David's next door neighbor had a swimming pool. David was four, his next door neighbor was six. One day when David's next-door neighbor came home, he hollered. He said, David, David, I just passed my swimming test. I can swim without my puddle jumper. David ran in the house, and he asked Mom. He said, Mom, Mom, can I go swim next door? They just got home from swimming lessons. Mom said, okay, let's get your sunscreen and your puddle jumper. And the phone rang. David didn't wait on Mom. David took off running next door, and what did he do? He jumped right in that pool without his puddle jumper. What do you think happened? He no, he didn't drown because the next-door neighbor's mommy was there, and she grabbed a hold of him and said, David, where's your puddle jumper? And he said, I forgot. That's just like if we forget to ask Jesus to take care of us and to be in our lives, we can get in trouble too. But one more thing, and I'm going to let you go back to Mommy and Daddy. When we forget and we do something we shouldn't, it's kind of like forgetting our sunscreen and getting a sunburn. Mommy might have to put some after sun gel on to make it quit burning and we might have to pray and say dear jesus i'm so sorry please forgive me and that would be like our after sun after sunburn sunscreen we did have to when we stayed on the beach too long okay you have a good summer Thank you, Vicki, for uh, that wonderful children's story. Prayer is a very important thing in our lives as Christians. It's the opportunity to talk to our God, which is a very special privilege. 
I want to call Katie Grant up here one more time. Only one more time, Katie. You only have to be up in front of everybody. I know it's a nerve-wracking thing. We are just calling you up this time. For one, we still need to vote as a church if we want you a part of our church family. But don't worry. I, usually, I have never heard a no. Okay? So, at this time, uh, can I get a motion to accept Katie to be a part of our church family? Okay, got a second. All in favor, please say amen. amen. And you are a part of our church family already. Look at that. Um, at this time, we do have a few things that we want to give you and welcome you to our family. Um, this is uh, a devotional book just for you. That's for me. And uh, the church also, Pastor David has something for you too. And I do believe, yes, and here is your baptismal certificate saying that you were baptized, okay? And you can keep that for the rest of your life. But we are thankful that you made this decision today, Katie, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, just helping you grow in your spiritual walk. You'll get a chance to uh, welcome Katie here in the front right after church, and then we'll continue that welcome and celebration downstairs where we have our welcome reception uh, for Katie and for the Shaws.
lessons and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. this on? Can you hear me? Yes. Wow. I'm not used to this little dangling thing on my ear. This is new tech. I'm going to step in here real quick. Yeah, buddy. What do you need? You're not part of the sermon. Good boy. He could be a part of it. I had to. Good morning, everybody. It's good to be here. Are you happy to be here? Yes. yes. I'm going to see a few things before I get into the topic. Uh, it's a small world in Adventism. And I've got to say this. I'm not going to ask the person to stand, but I'm going to mention their name really quickly here. For those of you who know a Pastor Rose, raise your hand. That's in this church. Do you know a Delphina? No one's raising their hands? That man right there with his wife, and Duffy and his little kids, that was my pastor when I was first through fourth grade back in Maine. It is a small world in Adventism. He was the one that did my first baptismal class. It was him, and I distinctly remember the outline in the sheet, and the rest is history. Um... Also, I'd like to say something. It's a privilege to be here. It really is. I thank you for the warm welcome, uh, for your love, and the privilege of being able to speak to you today. God is good. And time and time again, my wife and I have consistently seen the Lord work on our hands. We got an answer to prayer. Thank you for praying for the house. It took us two months to get that, but we laid out our sheet. Lord, I have a list. This is what I want, and I'm not going to let up. I want nice, sunny windows. I want big rooms so I can put stuff in. You accumulate things over time. And so we needed space, and we needed a specific location, and we got it. God will give you what you ask for if it's his will. And it's your will, it's his will, excuse me, that your kids have a proper place to be educated at? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. They have a nice church to go to. They also have a decent-sized backyard. That was required for me. <laughs> I've got to have that. Uh, let's have a word of prayer as we get into the text this morning. Father, I am so glad to be here this morning. I really am. And this is my prayer, like Paul mentioned, I think it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm not exactly sure, where he said in layman's terms that the power of the Spirit is not my words, but the words of the Lord. 
And that's my prayer this morning as we talk about the remedy. Lord, I ask your spirit to be here. Touch our hearts. We ask in Jesus' name and pray. Amen. <laughs> Throughout the world and through history, there are two antagonistic forces opposed, or rather drawing hearts to the other end. God is reaching out to draw hearts to him, and the devil is reaching out through means of the world uh, to draw hearts to him. Adventists are not exempt from this. Christians are not exempt from this. As a matter of fact, he works harder on you and I. Little sister who just got baptized. I remember I was baptized when I was young. He's going to have to you. And every day, we have to commit our lives to Christ and open up. Mine's black. Do you have a copy? Did anybody bring a hard copy of their Bible today? Hard copy. Please hold it up. Please hold it up. We have some hard copies. Good. I hope that at home it doesn't collect dust. And if you've got it on your phone, it doesn't collect digital mold. We don't want that. And so for a bit of a brief background, as you're talking about this, what is the remedy to keep your life on track? The uh, billboard out there says CPR. Any of you familiar with CPR? Have any of you ever been trained in CPR? Raise your hand. Yeah, I haven't. You got that already? I didn't get trained at all on that. I'm behind. I need to. What does it stand for? Cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So there's a, you're trained for a cardiac event or someone passes out or drowned. You, amend, you put CPR. We also have a device that's on the wall out there. It's called an AED. First, you've got to read the instructions on how to use it, or you might end up with a serious problem. Because you have to read the instructions, then you have to do what? Apply. You read instructions, open your book, and whatever it says in this book, you do what? You apply. The AED, I watched a video of it on YouTube. I'm like, okay, I've never heard of an AED. I've heard of a defibrillator. They got the little thing, you put it together, and poof, you wait for a signal, and you shock someone. This one, you've got to put it on the heart and the right shoulder. And then it says, press a button and stand back. What does that have to do with what Peter is talking about here? CPR. Listen to this. Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22, seeing you have, referring to a past tense experience of conversion. These are converted Christians. A little bit of a historical background. This is Peter writing a general epistle to Christians in Asia Minor being persecuted under Nero. So when you understand a little bit of historical, just that thin line right there, the background, the historical background, you understand better the words he uses in this letter. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth. My King James Version says through the Spirit. Some of them omit that. No person can purify their souls by themselves. You can't do that. In the line here, in obeying the truth, what kind of Christians are these? They've been persecuted. They are going through persecution. And Peter sends in this letter of encouragement. Look, he went before you. He's been through the same mess. Go through. Throughout 1 Peter, there's calls to obedience and calls to holiness. These are committed, converted Christians. And they've applied, listen, CPR. But I want you to think of CPR in a different way. Because we often view the Bible in a do this and don't do that kind of fashion. We do. The thou shalt and the thou shalt not. You're familiar with that, aren't you? 
But I need you to understand the Bible is the most relational book you'll ever touch. It is. You can walk into any store. You can go to the romance novel section. I don't recommend it. Try to find a relationship somewhere else. You want to get into this book and get into CPR. Let me tell you what it stands for. CPR stands for Committed Personal Relationship with Jesus. Are you following me? This group of people, Peter is telling them, look, you've done that before. You've obeyed the truth. You have a committed personal relationship with Christ through the Spirit, through this book. Then he says in the next question, he doesn't leave it disconnected because you've got to have it next to it. Because you can apply this book here, but where do you usually apply CPR at? Here. And if this book only stays here, and I understand the instructions, but I don't apply here, it doesn't go anywhere. It just ends up being intellectual Christianity. And Jesus doesn't want just intellectual Christianity. He wants a committed personal relationship, CPR, with you. And when you open up the book, like this group here had obeyed the truth, you need to take it very personally. You have to. This one's for me. This is for Pastor Jason right here. And when Ian opens up his, it's his time with Jesus, just him. That doesn't mean avoid groups, because he's talking to a group here. But you've got to take it personally. Peter continues on. Unto unfeigned, my other translation said, like NASB says, sincere love for the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. And I'm glad he adds that in this time. Because you cannot disconnect obedience from love. Or else you're a machine and an automaton. Or else the obedience is merely out of just do it for do it's sakes. But what good does that do anybody if it's disconnected from love? Let me get into a little Greek here real quick. I don't want to bore you because I'm one of those theology students just like Ian here. But he uses two different Greek words here. The first one he uses Philadelphia, which is brotherly love. And the second one he uses is in the Greek is agape. Different words. Remember Paul, I'm going a little off here. Paul in 1 Corinthians 13, the way of love, charity, love suffers long and is kind, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil of no one, rejoices in righteousness, not unrighteousness. It's all the same word, agape, 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 all the way through. It's a love you and I cannot have outside of Christ. Brotherly love, (laughs) sometimes you and I can manifest that sometimes. But really, ultimately, love comes from God. And any disobedience that's disapplied or disconnected from it, you cannot have. It won't work. Imagine trying to have unfeigned, fervent love disconnected, excuse me, excuse me, imagine having a committed relationship disconnected from love. How many of you are married? Raise your hands. Don't be shy. I'm not going to pick on you. (laughs) I know I'm married, going on nine years. And there were certain things in my life when we first got married, I just did them blah, blah, just to do them. It doesn't work. It has to be out of love and commitment like these guys here that Peter's talking about. You guys are going through that. You've purified your soul. You've purified your passions. The soul means what that means. The seat of the heart. In obeying what? Huh? I can't hear anybody. What they obey? The truth. They obey the truth. What is truth, Pilate said? What is truth? Someone got it. 
Verse 23. I love verse 23. How many of you have children? I see children in here. The adults, the parents that have children here, raise your hands. Or had children. They're gone. They've grown up. Your parents are here. They're gone. Peter couldn't give you a more intimate type of wording for the kind of committed personal relationship he wants you to have with Christ in using what he just says here. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but by incorruptible seed, by the word of God. I'm going to go on to verse 2 of chapter 2. Listen to this, though. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. In verse 2, he's applying the word. In verse 2, he uses a metaphor. Mommies, they've done scientific studies to show the intimate connection between a mom and its child through breastfeeding. They've shown that. And Peter uses that metaphor. Look, you need to desire the truth like that. You've got to gobble it up. The first thing you could do in the morning when you get up is not Instagram. Guilty. It's not Facebook. It's not the greatest thing you got in life. It's what? This. This. Because he says in 23, being born again. Again, he's referring back to that experience they had before. You guys were committed, converted Christians. And I don't know about you, but I need a big dose of CPR every day. Every day. Relationships don't work unless you actually work on them committedly, purposefully, every day in obeying the covenant that you made with your spouse the day you got married. It don't work. Verse 1 of chapter 2. Peter talks about a list, a small list of things that need to disappear. They need to go away. He says, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking, those things have got to go. If you're a newborn in Christ. Woke up this morning going over this and went over this last night in the text. It's good to go over things that make you think. And I thought about this text a lot over the last two weeks. There's a lot in this text. But consistently over and over again, when I looked at this text, the same thing kept coming to my mind because I prayed to the Lord about it a lot. Jason, I need you to talk about commitment. Let me explain why. Our world today uses the word relationship very loosely. Very loosely. I have a relationship with my dog, with my car, with Jesus and my spouse. Now, you may have a relationship with your dog. I love dogs. But it's not the same relationship you got with Jesus Christ. At least we hope not. Or even your spouse. We hope it's be the same, the different thing, like on a whole other level. But in our day and age, the word relationship gets tossed around, hey, I have a relationship with this person, and who knows where it's going to go. A relationship that's shallow, when the hard times come, like these guys being persecuted here under Nero, they skedaddle. I don't want out of this relationship. I don't want to be here anymore. They will leave. They will. A relationship that is committed will go through the hard times like these Christians are, and even though hell and back again, I'm still committed. Jesus is committed to you and I's salvation. He is. And Peter, of all the people to write this, 1 Peter the guy who denied his Lord three times, who was reinstated, asked three times, do you love me, Peter? Feed my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? Feed my lambs, etc., etc." Lord, you know I love you. Was drawn in to a committed personal relationship to Christ. And he wants the same for you and I. 
Don't let the devil fool you into a cheap relationship. He wants you to have an authentic one. Christ does. Verse 3 of chapter 2. Have any of you had this happen to you recently? It says, If so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Have you tasted that the Lord is gracious? I didn't hear any amens. Not enough. The Lord is gracious, folks. He's good. I've tasted, I've seen it over and over and over again in my life. I cannot deny it. An agnostic, an atheist, no matter what they tell me, and I've talked to them before, cannot take it away from me. An Adventist, Adventist or Baptist or whoever will not take it away from me. I have seen over and over again, God is good to me. It is through the application, the internalization that we get these things that we have the cure and there's only one remedy in Christ. That's it. The Word. We have a problem. Believe me, before my wife and I had our house, we were having this book open regularly. Lord, we got promises. Open that big book up. Open it right up because, folks, every promise in here is for you and me. It is not for the person who's gotten their life right on track. No. It's for the person like you and me who are sinners who are getting it on track in Christ. I can't do it myself, God. I can't. And so we got on our hands and knees. We fasted for three days. Not the whole day. And we open that back. Lord, it says in Psalm 37, verse 4, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall what? He will give you the desires of your heart. I had people tell me, Jason, Jason, just pick a house. Nope. I asked for something, Lord, and I'm going to get it. Because you promised. If it's your will. And we got it. And in doing that, in opening the book, in having a committed personal relationship with Jesus, we were drawn even closer. He didn't push me away. Through the hard time, like these Christians under Nero, we were drawn into a deeper relationship, committed relationship with Christ. And he wants it for all of us. There's a quote here I want to use in the spirit of prophecy. It comes from Christ Albert Lessons, page 38. I love this. Listen very carefully. The word of God is the seed. When you plant a tomato seed in the ground, what do you want out of it? Mangoes. That'd be nice. But this mangoes aren't going to come out of the seed. Not going to work. It's a specific thing. Tomato is a tomato, that's a fake fern, but it was a fern to be a fern. So the word of God produces what in you and I? The character of Christ. That's what it's supposed to reproduce in you and I. When we internalize this, listen to this. Every seed in itself has a germinating principle. In it, the life of the plant is enfolded. It's very specific. So there is life in God's word Amen. in this book. And I believe that with all my heart. The words that I speak unto you, Jesus says, they are spirit and they are life. John 6, 63. He that heareth my word and believes on him that sent me has what life? Everlasting life. It's mine. And I could hold on to that. In every command and in every promise of the word of God is the power, the very life of God. Did you get that? No one's listening. In every command and in every promise of the Word of God is the power, the very life of God. Uh, that's hard to believe sometimes. It's just ink on paper. But have you tasted and seen that God is good? Do you want CPR? Yes. Not done. The very life of God by which the command may be fulfilled and the promise realized. Folks, he stands by everything he says in his book. And I love him for that. He who by faith receives the word is receiving the very life and character of God. 
Did you get that? So, back to Peter. Seeing you have converted, committed Christians, all they're going through dark times during the reign of Nero. I can only imagine. Read the history about that guy. He was crazy. He was crazy. Having purified your souls and obeying the truth, obedience unto unfeigned or sincere love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. It's not just Christians that are in need of CPR, but those outside the doors here who don't know him. How many of you want CPR? I need some cardiopulmonary resuscitation. I need some committed personal relationship with Jesus, and not just any kind, but personal. Let's bow our heads in our prayer. Father, we thank you for the word. The living word that we have a privilege of opening up every single day and internalizing the very life and character of Christ in our hearts and our minds. And we want, Jesus, we want CPR, a committed personal relationship through obedience to the word. And we can't do it by ourselves, Lord. We thank you that it's through the Spirit and by your grace, because you're all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-present. And may we believe that, Lord. And like it says in verse 3 of chapter 2, if we've tasted and seen that God is good. Father, it is my prayer today, in Christ and through the Spirit, that we will be committed every day to seek CPR. In Jesus' name I pray and ask. Amen. is standing on the promises hymn number 518 would you please stand with me and sing standing on the promises of Christ my King through eternal ages let his praises ring glory I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail Of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing
As Doug comes to share our benediction blessing with us from God's Word, I just want to remind you that Katie will be here in front with Pastor Ian. You can welcome her, and then we'll continue the celebration downstairs with our welcome receptions for both the Shaw family and Katie. Our scripture benediction is found in 1 Peter chapter 2, and I'll read verses 2 and 3. As newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Let us live that out this week. Amen. <laughs>